Much to Sabrina's surprise, the remaining guy went through a disturbing transformation of his own. His body doubled in size, and his skin turned a muddy green. He grew pointy ears like a bat, and his lower jaw jutted out past his nose. Two gnarled tusks, like those on a sab- saber-toothed tiger, rose out of his mouth, and his eyes became as red as blood. Goblins! Hamster cried. The guard held a nutty club, which he swung into Mr. Kenneth's chest as if he were trying to k- hit a home run. The blow was like a tiny annoyance to the old man. He snatched the weapon away, crushing it into splinters in his furry hand. The, then he seized the guard around the neck and lifted him off the ground. The boss will kill you, the first guard cried from behind the bar as he sprang to his feet. He was already changing to a beast as gruesome as his partner. I'd like to see him try. Kenneth said with a wicked laugh. Do you think he can stand up to the big bad wolf? A chill raced up Sabrina's back. Mr. Kenneth was certainly losing control of his alter ego if he was now referring to himself as the big bad wolf. Control yourself ever after, bellowed a voice. Four fairies appeared from nowhere and surrounded the family. They were much more like Puck in appearance than the two fairies Sabrina had seen at the tavern door. Each had porcelain skin and blonde hair. They all wore jeans, black boots, leather jackets, and ball caps, and would have looked like normal kids if it weren't for their pink wings and the crossbows that he leveled at Mr. Kenneth's head. Each weapon was loaded with a jagged steel-tipped arrow. The leader of the group stepped forward. He had eyes like bright blue diamonds and a head of shaggy hair. His wings fluttered rapidly as if responding to the tension in the room. He looked no older than Sabrina, but had the confidence of a full-grown man. They were trying to get an undesirable uh, in to see the boss. The second goblin croaked as he struggled to free himself from Kenneth's iron grasp. Release the guard, the fairy said to Mr. Kenneth. Kenneth put the goblin down and then did something that made Sabrina shudder. He sniffed the creature and licked his lips. I smell your fear, darkling, he said to the guard. It's delicious. Granny saw a hand on Mr. Kenneth's shoulder. Old friend, she said softly, and this time it calmed the old man. He shrank to his familiar form. For a moment, he glanced around as if he wasn't sure where he was. He looked down his left hand with a confused expression. It had not changed back over the rest of the, his body. It was still covered in a thick brown fur. The fairy leader turned to Mr. Hamster, who held Puck beyond, bundled in his arms. Let's see this fairy. Hamster pulled back the blanket to reveal Puck's fevered face. The leader blanched, then gingerly took the weak boy into his own arms, cradling him gently. He's wounded badly, Grain Rada said. We hoped your people might be able to help. Follow me, the boy fairy said as his wings vanished. But Mustard Seed, one of the gods cried, your father. Mustard Seed turned a heart stare on the goblin. My father will not hear of this, will he? The goblin's eyes were now alight with fear. Of course not, he stammered. The boy fairy nodded, turned and strode through the double doors. The group hurried to follow. He led them down a long, narrow hallway lined with doors. At the far end was a pair of marked employees only. The fairy shouldered them aside and gestured for the family to follow. They found themselves in a large room of hardwood floors. A roaring fireplace crackled on one side and a large oak desk sat on the other. A few high-backed chairs were scattered about. In one of them sat a woman wearing a leopard print dress, big golden hoop earrings, and matching shoes. Sabrina guessed she was in her early 40s, and despite her gaudy outfit, she seemed very dignified. She had long brown hair, professionally styled, and the same shocking blue eyes as mustard seed. A pretty young girl around Sabrina's age stood behind her, gently combing the woman's hair. The girl's eyebrows were arched upward in what appeared to be a pu- to be a permanent look of doubt and suspicion, and she was wearing an odd little pastel dress that seemed to be made out of silks and spiderwebs. Mustard seed, if you are looking for your father, he is not here, the woman said. Thank the heavens for miracles, the boy said as he sat Puck on the nearest sofa. Puck has returned. 
The woman and the young girl cried out in unison, rose to their feet and rushed to Puck's side. They knelt down and brushed his matted hair off his sweaty face. Son! The woman cried. Sabrina was stunned. She assumed that Puck had a mother, nearly everyone did, but she had pictured her as old and broken, physically and mentally exhausted by Puck's pranks and immaturity. This woman was young and healthy and seemed to be perfectly sane. Ma, find Cobweb, quickly, the woman said to the girl. Tell him to bring his medicines. But, go, Puck's mother shouted. Moth cringed and raced from the room as the woman turned her attention back to Master Seed. Where did you find your brother? You're his brother? Sabrina said. But you're so clean. Puck was usually covered in food and whatever he had found in the forest to roll around in. Puck has to be adopted, Sabrina thought to herself. They brought him, Master Seed said to his mother, just run to the grips. What did you do to my boy? Puck's mother studied the group for the first time, her face full of suspicion. He was fighting a jabberwocky and it ripped off his wings, Sabrina explained, feeling a lump of guilt large in her throat. He'd been trying to protect her. The woman eyed her coldly. And where would my son encounter a jabberwocky? Fairport Landing, Stephanie replied. He lives there with us. The woman scowled. So that's where he went. Ma'am, my name is Rod Grimm. I've been looking after Puck for some time now. These are my... Grimm? More troublemakers? The woman bellowed, cutting Grim Rhoda off. Sabrina sighed. Everywhere the family went, they got an angry reception from ever after. Was this just old age hatred of Wilhelm, or had her father Henry been meddling in ever after business? Sabrina's heart sank. Had her father been secretly doing the detective work he'd left Fairy Port Landing to avoid? You must know our father, Henry, Sabrina said, testing her theory. Your father, no. I'm talking about Veronica Grimm, Puck's mother said. Veronica? The Grimms cried in unison. You know our mom? Daphne said. The woman fell back as if she'd been slapped. Veronica Grimm had children... At that moment, the little fairy girl known as Moth returned to the room. Your Majesty, Cobweb is on his way. Very good, Mustard Seed. Escort these people to the street. His mother snapped. Their presence is no longer required. Whoa, 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 Mr. Hamstead said. Let's all calm down. Now we all want what's best for Puck, so... You can leave on your feet on a box. The woman threatened. Mr. Kenneth stepped forward, eyes flashing. He started to open his mouth, but was quickly interrupted by an angry voice. If anyone's leaving in a box, it will be you. Sabrina spun around finding three large men standing behind her. Their leader was a tall, bearish fairy, roughly the same age as Puck's mother. He had a big, thick face and thinning hair. He was wearing a black pinstripe suit, expensive shoes, and a gold watch. His wings were fluttering furiously. The other two men were the ones Sabrina had seen when she had first entered the golden egg, the track suit bouncer and his bulldog-faced partner. They were carrying violin cases. Elita charged at Puck's mother, grabbing her roughly by the wrist and shaking her violently. You've pushed me too far, Titania. Get your hands off me, Oberon, the woman roared, pulling her hands away. Get this traitor out of here, Oberon cried, pointing at, Pe- uh, pointing at Puck. His two huge cohorts moved toward the sick boy. He's hurt, Mustard Seed said, as he stepped in his path to protect his brother. Oberon turned his anger on his son. Would you like to join your brother in banishment? Do you want to be Leo Stad Dab as well? Mustard Seed shook his head. Still, he stood his ground. Puck is your son and he's hurt, Oberon, Titania pleaded. He's no son of mine, the king snarled, standing over Puck's weak body with clenched fists. He betrayed me. He turned his back on thousands of years of tradition. 
in the old lands, the king of fairy would have had his head on a pike for such disobedience. What's a pike? Daphne whispered to her sister. A long pointy stick, Sabina replied quietly. Daphne curled her lip. Just like your traditions, the old lands are dead and gone, Titania said. Bah! A baron cried, not for long. Just then, a tall, thin man with long black hair and a dark face entered the room. His eyes were sunken and purple. He carried a black case in one frail hand. You called for me, he said. Cobweb, I'm afraid you wasted a trip. We won't be needing any medicine today, O'Brien said, dismissing the fairy with a flick of his hand. Sabrina was stunned. Will he really let Puck die? No, wait, Titania cried. She pulled her husband aside, and her voice suddenly softened. Let Cobweb heal Puck, and I will give you a present. What could you give me that I would ever want, Titania? Power, Oberon, Titania said. I can give you power over an entire community. I already control them, the fairy leader said with a laugh. His goons giggled with him. Perhaps, but, perhaps, but you don't command the respect. I can give you something you've always wanted, the support, Titania argued. I can give you something that will help you rebuild your precious fairy kingdom. And what would that be? Oberon said. Titania gestured to uh, Sabrina and Daphne. The children of Veronica Grimm. Oberon looked stunned for a moment, then laughed. Another one of your lies. Titania grabbed Sabrina roughly by the wrist. Tell him who your mother was, human. Veronica Grimm, Sabrina said, yanking her hand away. Why do you think you've got the wrong Veronica Grimm? She wasn't involved in any ever after nonsense. Uh, Baron's eyes flashed so brightly Sabrina had to look away. Then he turned to a cobweb. Heal the boy. A Baron turned back to his wife. But when he's well, he can go back to whatever rock he has been living under for the last ten years. Mustard Sea and Moth looked saddened by Oberon's declaration, but Titania nodded and thanked him. Oberon spoke to the fairy in a tracksuit. Bobby Screwball, I need a wizard. Bobby Screwball nodded, reached into his violin case, and took out a long, thin stick with a big silver star on the end. He waved it, into, if he waved it in circles above his head, and with a flick of his wrist, a man suddenly appeared from nowhere. He was short and punchy with thinning hair and a big bulbous nose. He wore grey trousers, a white shirt, and an emerald green apron covered in oil and dirt. He seemed completely bewildered, his eyes darting around the room in panic. Then he frowned. Ah, oh, jeez, your majesty, the man cried in a thick southern accent. I was in a staff meeting. An entire group of trainee elves and Santa Clauses just saw me disappear into thin air. They're probably awfully tired. You may think they forget for dust grows on trees, but you're wrong. It's very expensive and harder and harder to get. Wizard, I need your particular talents, Abraham said. Tonight we're having a celebration. I want to see every ever after in town. Tell them I have a special surprise for them. You're kidding me, right? A party? Tonight? The wizard cried. Impossible. I can't just walk over and have the signal turned on. These things have to be planned. The fairy with the bulldog face tapped over to the wizard, grabbed him by the shirt collar, and pulled him close. You're the wizard. Nothing is impossible. Call off your goon, little man cried. Let him go, Tony Fats, a baron said. The fairy frowned but released the squalling man. Fine, but don't expect a miracle, the wizard grumbled. That's why I like to hear, the king said. He turned, them, he turned to his men and gestured at Sabrina and her family. Keep them somewhere safe. We don't want the community's Christmas present damaged. I think uh, that's the end of this video. I'll see more later. Goodbye.